Backstage Knitting Podcast. Backstage Knitting Podcast. Backstage Knitting Podcast. Backstage Knitting Podcast. Grab your knitting nanny cup of tea. Beth and Anna, what more could you need? It's the Backstage Knitting Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Backstage Knitting Podcast. I'm Bethany, and I'm your host today. This is episode uh, 43. I'm recording it on Thursday, August 2nd, 2018. And I just wanted to thank all of our new listeners and viewers and all of our returning listeners and viewers for, for giving me a chance and checking this show out. I really appreciate it. So I wanted to start out this week with a shout out. Meepers uh, on Ravelry, that's her Ravelry name, introduced herself this week. And she also happens to be Melanie, who owns Black Trillium Fibers. And if you have not checked out their yarn, you should absolutely do so because it's fabulous and I want all of it. So go ahead and give her uh, some of your business if you are so inclined. And thank you so much, Melanie, for introducing yourself in the Ravelry group this week. If you want a shout out, all you have to do is go on to Ravelry, join the Backstage Knitting group, and there is a Getting to Know You thread where you can introduce yourself and tell me what you knit or crochet or spin or if you do theater or if you go spelunking, do you, I don't know. Whatever you wanna share with me, I like to know where people live. It's so cool that, you know, you can reach people in all different countries and parts of your own country and it just it really I enjoy it and I like I like having those conversations with you so if you are so inclined to do so you'll get a shout out and that's always awesome too if you are looking to find backstage knitting podcast anywhere else in the social media internet universe place you can do so by finding us friending us following us whatever on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope. You can find the show notes. Well, I will link to all of the things I talk about today uh, at backstageknitting.com. Uh, if you want to email me with questions, comments, concerns, feedback, etc., you can do so at backstageknitting at gmail.com. And of course, the Ravelry group is a great way to get in touch with me. And you can also subscribe to the audio version of the show through Apple Podcasts and or other, you know, podcast subscriber aggregator thingies. And if you are on video, you can subscribe on YouTube and I uh, strongly encourage you to do all of those things. Okay. Well, let's jump into what I have been working on since we spoke last. So first, I'm still slowly but surely working on my Mama Vertebrae by Kelly Van Nierken, and it's knitted in Knitted Wit in the Victory so in her Victory sock base in the Rainier colorway, and I am just about done with the ribbing on the first sleeve. It's been a little slow going just because um, with the temperatures being in the high 80s to 90s, I haven't really wanted to have a whole sweater sitting in my lap. But um, yeah, so I'm almost done. We went and saw a movie the other night and I made a good headway on this cuff, so I should be able to get the second sleeve started sooner rather than later. I'm really excited about it. And this is just, you know, it's just so much fun. I'm really excited to wear it. I think it'll be great for fall when it gets a little chillier, but isn't like, here is my big fisherman sweater cold, you know? Um, let's see, what else have I been working on? I just cast on a new sock head hat. So this one is going to be for me. This is also in Knitted Wit in the Victory Sock base. And this, see, I, I literally just cast it on. If you are watching, 
it is just the cast on row plus a knit row to get it started and a little bit extra but this is in yellow and black this is in the Hufflepuff uh, inspired colorway and it is for me because I took the Pottermore quiz at some point and they said I was a Hufflepuff and I'm just going with it I'll be a Hufflepuff I'm good with that oh okay so that is what I literally started probably half an hour ago and yeah so I, I, you know, I will match my sisters when we go to comic book conventions, which we do a lot. Uh, I've also been on a sock kick. Like my uh, sock mojo is back hardcore, which I'm really into because I have a lot of sock yarn. So um, first off, I have started and I'm working on the second Port Gamble sock. And this one is in the, uh, is in Mondim, color 201, and this is the 100% non-superwash Portuguese wool. It is in, like, purples and pinks and reds with some white. So I have done the heel flap, I have turned the heel, and now I just need to pick up for the gusset and do all of those things voila and then I cast on another one same Port Gamble sock but this one is in oink pigment in their oink sock base in the listen humans colorway which is a dark purple a gray, black, white, light purple, neon green colorway. And it looks like Maleficent to me. And Maleficent is my all time absolute favorite Disney villain. And I absolutely needed a pair of uh, Disney, or of Maleficent socks. So, I've done the cuff. Again, I'm making the Port Gamble socks out of this as well by Fairlight Fibers. I've done the cuff and I have about, let's see, where am I at? One, two, three, four. So I have about nine rows left of body or whatever before I start doing my heel flap. And I have been working on these ones on the Addy Flexi Tip Needles. So they're coming up pack of three and they're like double pointed needles, but they have a little bit of cord in between. They have about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inch of flexi cable. So it's like a really, really, really short circular needle or a really long bendy double point. I'm not sure how I feel about them. I got them to try them and I can see where they have both their benefits and their drawbacks compared to either regular straight double pointed needles, which I'm doing the other Port Gamble socks on uh, magic loop which I usually do my socks on or two like 16 inch circulars which is a method that Anna really likes but I've never it's never done a lot for me I always found that I would um, end up knitting with the wrong needle so what I found with the the flexi tips is that to hold them well, at least from, you know, I've done 14 rows on them, so I haven't put them through a rigorous, like, life test yet, but they are short enough so you're not going to accidentally knit with the wrong one. So there is the perk over doing two circular needles, but they're not long enough or have enough give to them that you sort of have this other needle flopping in the wind while you 
are using the other two because they're not quite yeah so that's where they their drawback over say magic leap but so i'll keep using them and i'll let you know i'm not i'm not sold and for their price point i'm not convinced that they're a huge step up necessarily from either regular double points or one really long circular needle for magic loop yeah but those are those are the things I have been working on and have been on my needles for the last two weeks uh, I'm hoping to have a couple more projects going soon so let's see what do I have off the needles because I finished things this week yay I love it when I actually finish things so first off I finished the first sock and this is also the Port Gamble sock in the, uh, which is by Fairlight Fibers. And it's just, a, it's a nice, simple, shorty sock with a heel flap and gusset. But it has this squishy garter stitch, garter um, heel flap, which is nice and cushy and I'm super obsessed with. And want to wear it with all of my open heeled things. So I finished those during a car ride the other day with a really, it has not good Kitchener toe. Kitchener's not my strong suit. I don't know what I did. I've done it better in the past. This time I did not do it so well, but it's not enough to bother me. So I'm keeping it as it is. Um, Let's see, I also finished, what else did I finish? I finished this sock head hat by Kelly McClure. And this is in the Sneaky Snake colorway, also by Knitted Wit in their Victory Sock. And this is green and gray, or silver stripes, if you will, to represent the Slytherin house. This is a birthday gift for one of my sisters. Again, we will be wearing that when we are uh, nerding it up at Comic-Con in September. <sighs> yeah, so those are the things I have finished this week. And yeah, nothing too, too exciting there, but it's always, it always makes me feel good when I actually get to finish things because lately I felt like I haven't had a whole lot of time to really just sit down and knit stuff. So that has been awesome. Um, in time out. So I have been working on the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry, and I've been using the Sublime DK in a bunch of colors from uh, Black Trillium Fibers for this cardigan. And I bound it off sometime in May when I was in Colorado for my brother's law school graduation. And it was puckering at the bottom, like the collar part was pulling up the edge of the sweater. So in talking with a friend about what to do, whatever, we decided that I would um, rip the collar out and then block the sweater and then try to pick up those stitches again because I'd been coming out short on my stitches. So uh, I went to a knit night at a Starbucks the other day, which was great because then I could frog the sweater, which I did or frog the collar, the rest of the sweater is intact. Uh, but it was nice because the Starbucks had cold air so I could sit with the sweater in my lap to frog it. Unfortunately, I haven't been home long enough to really block it so that still, we're working our way out of time out slowly but surely. But here is the sweater without the collar. It's beautiful, but um, yeah, so I'm still working on that. I've done part of it. And hopefully by the time we talk next, it will be out of time out and back on the needles and behaving the way a good sweater is supposed to. Uh, let's see, moving on. Spinning and weaving. I've done no weaving. Nope, not at all. But I have done so much spinning because of Tour de Fleece. Tour de Fleece ended on Sunday. And again, I didn't make a specific like yardage or meter goal for anything. I just um, was playing around with that roving that had been sent to me from Kramer Yarns. 
and I just I had so much fun with the colors and then so I did two bobbins like spinning wheel Ashford traditional bobbins worth uh, this I'm holding up one that has a lot of like dark black on it but underneath is some lighter pink colors uh, there's another one still on my spinning wheel that I didn't bother to pull off but that has a whole bunch of different colors on it also I'm hoping I can start getting stuff plied soon I would I would really like that and then I also have been uh, I've gone a little drop spindle crazy so this on my two like wood drop spindles these are the three cops that I have completed uh, so this was just kind of testing, playing around. This was in that peachy colorway. And then my biggest one, because I did it on a much bigger drop spindle, is my Wonder Woman colors. And I am going to finish that. And then I, uh, because of somebody I follow on Instagram, she is a, she's a fair, she like spins. I think where some people are uh, knitters with capital K's, I get the impression she is a spinner with a capital S. And she really likes these turtle made uh, drop spindles. They're 3D printed. They're really cool um, and very well priced on Etsy. So I went and bought one. I got my shaft in the frost color and the flower wheel whirl part in I think magenta magenta or pink I don't remember exactly but still so it is a bottom whirl drop spindle and I am absolutely obsessed with it I've started spinning in public with it it just it works so so well so there is that and on this spindle I have been working with three different colors that are all in that Kramer roving that is a purple, like a teal, and a pink that matches the whirl of the spindle. And it has just been so much fun. So much fun. I really, really like spinning. And I'm hoping that even though the tour is over, I will be able to maintain regular spinning time and yeah, just keep it as part of my regular fiber crafty schedule because I know I don't always get that to work that sometimes I'm so focused on knitting, knitting, knitting that the spinning and other things fall through the cracks. And I'm not, I'm not so into that. Okay. Well, let's see what else have we got going on. Um, Things in rehearsal and performance are kind of uh, on hold for the moment where we're figuring some stuff out. There's been some casting problems, but as soon as I know what is going on there, we will, we're hoping to get a show going up in the last two weekends of that time slot. So as soon as I have a show and dates, I will of course let you guys know but I'll be, you know, running box office and doing sound and my usual stuff. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, Netflix and Knit. It's mainly been my usual, you know, Gilmore Girls, How I Met Your Mother sort of uh, stuff on TV. But. Yeah. Sorry. I thought we'd watch something else, but I don't think we have. Oh, we watched Notting Hill the other night. Totally spaced. Yeah, we watched Notting Hill, which I have on DVD. And that's one of those chick flicks that I really like, but it's never been one that I've watched like on repeat the way I've watched other romantic comedies on repeat. And it was just, it was really nice. Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts and very, very nice. Um... But the one I saw in theaters was I went and saw Won't You Be My Neighbor. And that's that new Mr. Rogers documentary. It was so good. It made me cry like three times. Tried really hard not to cry. And it got me. 
and I just, I really, first of all, the sweater watch was great. I really enjoyed watching the different sweaters Mr. Rogers had on and seeing the different variations his mom clearly put into all of those just very simple, simple sweaters, but they're all a little different and have a nice zipper and that was, that was really nice. Um, but it's just some goodness and some kindness into the world and his, uh, his belief that we need to protect the children. You know, we can't, we can't keep them from the harsh realities and the ugly side of the world forever, because eventually we do all grow up, but that we need to maintain, we need to maintain that innocence for as long as we can, but also tell them that it's okay that they have, they can have big feelings and there are healthy ways to deal with that. And it was just very touching and it made me cry. So I, I certainly appreciated that. And yeah, I don't think I have been watching anything else, really. Nope, not that I can think of. Um, book club, I have been reading Respect the Spindle which I bought a couple years ago, and that's uh, Respect the Spindle by Abby Frankmont. And again, I will have all of that information linked in the, uh, on the show notes, backstageknitting.com. And I, I bought it right after I bought my first drop spindle because I needed to figure out how to use the darn thing. And I read part of it, but you know, I wasn't really focused or I just, I don't know if I knew enough to really appreciate it. So now that I've spent more time with the drop spindle and spent more time with my wheel and uh, I've done a little bit more research into different fibers and all that stuff. I really, I'm, I'm just learning so much from respect to the spindle and like the physics behind it and the history behind it and how spinning, it just, it's such a huge part historically of our global economy. And that is so interesting to me. You know, I watch, I watch Snow White, or not Snow White, but Sleeping Beauty and they destroy all the spinning wheels and then I am very, very concerned about how um, how the, the economy maintained for the next 15 years while Aurora was in hiding because textiles and weaving and spinning, it was such a huge part of the economy that it's, it's something I worry about a lot. Um, yes, but so Respect the Spindle is what I've been reading. I'm about 30, 35% into it right now. It's good. It's meaty. Um, yeah, if you're interested in how to pick out a good drop spindle or kind of the science behind why spinning works the way spinning does, I highly recommend it. Yarny Adventures. So Tuesday... Yeah, so two days ago was the Mariners Stitch and Pitch game. The Mariners lost. I have yet to go to a Stitch and Pitch game where the Mariners win, even though I think they were on a winning streak beforehand. I don't really know. That's just, I don't follow them as the same way I follow other sporting groups. But I, yeah, we went. It was me, my mom, my sister, and my uncle. And then we met up with Anna and some uh, friends from my knitting group. We all had a row of seats together. And Stitch and Pitch is actually where I bought the Oink Pigment yarn and the Addy Flexi Tips. I bought those because they have a bunch of vendors out on the like breezeway thing. You know, where there's bathrooms and hot dogs and beer and stuff. And then they have booths with uh different like yarn stores and things they can sell the tickets and then they get booth space 
so that's pretty cool and um yeah i was so excited about that yarn anna actually sat there and was my swift for me and helped me wind the yarn into a ball because i wanted to cast on my maleficent socks right away but it's just it's a it's a good time it was a little hot and a little crowded but i think overall we had everybody had a really good time and it's it's a fun yearly yearly tradition and i love seeing all the other knitters and i ran into uh someone who came to our worldwide knit in public day a couple years ago and it's just i love i love the community behind these things and that was that was a lot of fun for me so um winding down here events there are a couple events coming up on I believe it's a Wednesday, September 5th. I will be giving a lecture on the history of knitting for the Seattle Knitters Guild. I'm not sure if it's open to the public. It's part of their mini classes. I'll have to look. But if you are part of the Seattle Knitters Guild or in the area, we'll, we'll check that out and hopefully you can come and maybe learn something about the history of knitting and knitting during war times. I'm kind of doing a little bit of both there. I'm really excited about it. Um, the first full weekend, second weekend, I don't know, like the 8th, 9th, 7th, 8th, 9th of September is uh, Rose City Comic Con and I will be there all three days with my sisters. Yeah, we're super excited. One of the days we'll be in our Harry Potter hats and so if you see us, um, the three of us are usually knitting, or at least two out of three. Come say hi, come, I don't know, take a picture. I'll try to remember to bring swag and I'll give you some swag and it'll be, it'll be a good time. I'm excited. And then of course, the um, Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl, their fall crawl is September 28th through the 30th. And I will be there, I will be crawling on Sunday the 30th with my mom and my sisters. Yeah, I'm super, super duper stoked. It's going to be a good time. We usually start in Fife and end in Chehalis. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you there again. Do not be afraid to come say hi or ask if I'm actually me because you know what I am and yeah all of that good stuff let's see was there anything else I needed to share with you I don't think so well I hope you all are having a lovely week and enjoying the last couple uh, couple weeks of summer before the school year starts for many of you and your children. And yeah, okay. So again, if you want to find me out in the, the universe, you can find Backstage Knitting Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and Twitter, but I do most of my stuff on Instagram. You can uh, look at the show notes where I will link to all of the things at backstageknitting.com. You can email me at backstageknitting at gmail.com. We have a lovely Ravelry group and I would love for you to be a part of it. If you like what you hear or see, please leave a review in Apple Podcasts or uh, a nice comment on YouTube, share it with your friends, subscribe. Um, that's how people find out about the show. Okay, well, I think that is it. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.